Hi everybody, this is Dr. Eliana Aaron, Director of EMA Care, and today we're going to speak about, today is uh, May 13th, and today we're going to speak about uh, really empowering parents to speak to their schools about pandemic planning, what kind of questions um, you should ask, who shouldn't come to Israel, um, and also specifically what these pandemic plans should include and what kinds of things you need to look for. And the purpose of all this is to really, again, empower the parents to feel confident that they're making a safe, good decision sending their child for a gap year in Israel. So even though things are a lot safer now in Israel than they were even a month ago, protocols do have to be in place when a second wave comes. So obviously, we hope that there isn't going to be a second wave, but it's really, really important that we have a plan so we don't have panicking as we did last year or this year um, and that everyone will feel confident. Having a plan is having confidence and security for your child that the year will continue and that everything is in place to assure that. So, and that of course the kids will be safe. So, um, you know, first of all, let's talk about which kids should not be coming. So kids who have medical or mental health conditions that are not stable probably should not come to Israel this year. People who have pre-existing conditions that are stable um, can probably come and not have a problem at all. Um, people who are going to require um, intense care or are going to be frequently having urgent issues it's not a good idea to bring them because they're going to end up being exposed to urgent care centers and emergency rooms. And we're trying to avoid that as much as possible this year. Um, I also think that parents who are extremely panicky about sending their kids or are already saying, well, as soon as there's a second wave, I'm pulling my kids out of the year in Israel, should not be sending their kids because we have to expect that there will be a second wave. Uh, it may be bigger than this wave. And if you are going to be uncomfortable with that, then your child does not belong in Israel. They belong with you at home. It's also not a good situation for a school to have kids who drop out early in the year and the slots that would have been open to kids who are in standby would not be open at that point. So I think overall um, that the few parents who are in that situation, and we're not judging you, um, should definitely not send their kids to Israel. I estimate that to be about 10% of parents. So um, we're going to talk about a pandemic plan. So the key, and I'm very into transparency, but the key for a pandemic plan is actually transparency. Uh, parents and students should have a right to see the pandemic plan. They should have a right to know what the school has planned. Um, it is important that it's written down and not just, yeah, yeah, we got it all taken care of. We're just going to call this guy. He's going to tell us what to do. I have a ton of experience dealing with quarantine um, in the last couple months with uh, hundreds of kids who were in quarantine that I was responsible for. And I can tell you, there isn't time to call and not to know what's going on. You need to know at the very beginning how to manage it, how to approach it, um, how to deal with hundreds of calls coming in, how to screen dozens and dozens of people in a very short period of time so that you could decide who needs quarantine, who doesn't need quarantine. So you need to really have a proper plan and have everyone aware of that plan so there's no panicking and there's no um, unnecessary stress. I think when people have a plan, the stress goes down a lot. Um, so the plan needs to include quarantine, um, a quarantine plan for individuals, groups, and even a whole school. That has happened a few times where a whole school actually ended up uh, in quarantine because of an exposure. Another um, thing that needs to be considered is the, um, there's another step under quarantine, which is for kids who are sick, they're supposed to be in um, home isolation, which is not the level of quarantine, but we don't want sick kids near other kids this year. Kid has fever, it could be that they have a cold and they have a mild fever. That student is not gonna be with other students until they're better. So schools need to have a plan in place for that. 
Um, there's a lot of logistics that go along with quarantine, such as um, managing food, laundry, and cleaning. And schools have to have a plan for how that's going to be managed. Uh, the students can't be left alone. They need to have someone responsible who's bringing them things that they need and is checking up on them, even if they're on the other side of the door. Um, having a plan for remote management of health and mental health is extremely important. That includes telemedicine, it includes on-campus um, on clinics, should be included for schools that are medium size or larger. Because during a pandemic, we just, you know, it's not that the kids can't go out to a clinic, it's that we don't want them to. We want them as much as possible to get um, healthcare services and, um, and uh, assistance without actually going into a crowded waiting room or sitting next to someone who's coughing. So we're trying to minimize those kind of exposures and there are solutions for that. Um, it's important for kids to have access to 24 seven health services in English. There are some programs that don't always have English speaking um, people to speak to on a 24 seven basis. They need to be able to talk. Um, and we need that service to be able to scale up very quickly. There are some services where there's one person answering, but what we really need is to have um, a scalable service so that if you have 100 phone calls or 120 phone calls, I think we got up to 150 phone calls um, in a very short period of time, a few hours, and we were able to manage it. So I'm saying you need to be able to do that. If you're screening one person at a time, Screening 100 kids is going to take maybe three or four hours. And sometimes that's a really, really long time. And that's, you know, on a good day, three or four hours. Really, it takes about five to 10 minutes to screen somebody. So that's six a minute. Now you're talking about like 10 hours of screening and that's just ridiculous. So um, I think it's very important for the school staff to be trained in the pandemic plan so that again, Everyone knows what their job is, everyone knows what they need to do, and everything is nice and calm. I think parents and students need to, again, um, have some preparedness. And being prepared is, is a key to getting through this period of time. We do not think it's going to be the whole year. We think there's going to be a short period of time relative to the year when there's going to be restrictions. But throughout the year, you're going to need this plan to be in place in case someone has an exposure. This is Dr. Eliana Aaron, Director of EMA Care. I hope everyone um, asks those questions um, and gets a pandemic plan from their school. And don't be afraid to ask for it. I think it's really important for your peace of mind. If you have questions about this or about anything that I've discussed, you could post them on Facebook or on YouTube, and I'm gonna try to get to all of them. Take care, bye-bye.